Thank you so much. And now I need you to tell us your full name and then spell it for us and speak right into that microphone. Carrie Lewis Lathan Sr. K-E-R-R-Y-L-A-T-H-A-N Lewis L-O-U-I-S. Is Lewis your middle name, sir? Yes. Okay, and did you say senior or junior? Senior. Okay, thank you, sir. There's some things that I need to go over with you before we start the questioning. The first is, and this is what I tell all of our civilian witnesses. There's some things that I need to go over with you before we start the questioning. The first is, and this is what I tell all of our civilian witnesses. It's very important that when you're testifying that you answer questions that would call for a yes or a no with a yes or a no instead of an uh-huh or yeah, which can be somewhat ambiguous. So if I forget and I say, did you mean yes or did you mean no? I'm not trying to bug you. I'm just trying to make sure that your answer is accurately reflected in our record. Do you understand that, sir? Yes. Okay. And the next is I'm going to ask that you wait until Mr. McKinney answers, asks the question completely and finishes before you give us your answer. Even if you think that you know what the question is, because I need to get that on record as well. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, Mr. Lathan, I also need to put on the record that I have before me a use immunity agreement. And this indicates that you have signed this agreement and you are represented by a lawyer and your lawyer is Lauren Noriega. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and her name is on this also. And did you review this agreement? It's two pages with her fully before you signed it? Yes, ma'am. Okay, now I'm gonna ask you questions about that conversation as to this immunity agreement, all right? But if your lawyer told you anything else, I don't want you to tell me what your lawyer said to you. Those communications are private, and unless you have spoken with your lawyer, I don't want you to tell us. And if you can't answer a question without saying, my lawyer told me, blah, 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 then you just let me know because you're not to answer those questions. Do you understand that? Yes, ma'am. Okay, is your lawyer outside here? She was. She had to leave. Okay, do you have a phone number you can get in touch with her? Yeah, when I leave out, I've got a phone out there. Okay, because Mr. Lathan, if you during the course of the questioning want to ask your lawyer a question before you answer the question here, you just let me know because you I'll let you leave the hearing room so you can contact your lawyer and consult with your lawyer and then you can come back and answer questions. Do you understand? Yes. Okay, so this agreement is between you and the district attorney's office and this agreement indicates that you will tell the truth and in exchange for telling the truth, anything that you say, any answers that you give to any questions that are directed to you by Mr. McKinney, if there's the possibility that there is criminal liability associated with your answer, you are not going to be prosecuted. Is that your understanding of this agreement? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and did you review that with your lawyer? I did. And did your lawyer tell you and advise you of all of your rights? Yes, ma'am. Did your lawyer tell you that you have to tell the truth for this agreement to be in effect? Yes, ma'am. Did your lawyer tell you that if you do not tell the truth, then this agreement is null and void and you can be prosecuted for anything that you state here in this room? Yes, ma'am. And you understand all of those things? Yes, ma'am. And any questions you had, did you direct them to your lawyer during your conversation or conversations with your lawyer concerning the immunity agreement? Yes, ma'am. Do you have any questions now? Can I go call her and tell her they're starting? Absolutely. Let's, I'll have Mr. McKinney wheel you out and you can just call her and tell her that we started, if that's what you would like to do, and then you'll come back in. Okay. All right, Mr. Lathan, did you have an opportunity to call your lawyer? I did. Okay, and were all of your questions answered? Is everything okay? Are you ready to testify? Yeah. Yes, I'm sorry. Yes. Okay, perfect. And again, if during the questioning you need to speak to your lawyer again, just let me know, okay? Okay. All right, I think I finished asking you questions regarding the immunity agreement. And just say again, you signed it, your lawyer signed it, and then Mr. Maybe that's Mr. McKinney's signature. It looks really difficult to decipher, but did you sign it and your lawyer? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and if you have any questions again, let me know, all right? So at this point, Madam Foreperson, with your permission, may Mr. McKinney proceed? Yes. Is he under oath? He was, she swore him in. Yeah. Okay, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. 
Let's start getting a little bit of information about you. How old are you? 56. Were you born in Los Angeles? Texas. Where? Houston, Texas. Okay, when did you come to Los Angeles? As a child, baby. Did you go to school here? I did. What part of LA did you grow up in? South Central. You were away from Los Angeles for a very long period of time, is that correct? Yes. You were in prison from 1996 until September of 2018 based on a murder conviction, is that true? That's true. Are you currently on parole? Yes, I am. Were you paroled in September of 2018? Yes, sir. And you came out to a very different world than the one you left, correct? Very different. When you got paroled in September of 2018, were you already aware or were you made aware of a person named Nipsey Hussle? I heard him a few times on the radio, on TV. Was that before you got out of prison or after? Before I got out of prison. And did you know he was from your old neighborhood? Not so much as that, he was a celebrity. I was looking at his celebrity status. It had nothing to do with any of that. Okay, so you knew who Nipsey Hussle was, but you didn't know he was connected to South LA, is that correct? To that degree, no. What does that mean, to that degree? Well, I wasn't knowledgeable until after he passing how everything swirled around, and I was like, okay. So, in other words, what you were saying is you got to know a lot more about him after he passed? Right. Okay, what I'm asking is, when you got out... Before you got out of prison, other than knowing he was an artist, did you know anything else about him? No. Okay. After you got out, did you After you got out, did you get to know him a little bit better than you did while you were in prison? Yes. Tell us about that. Well, my play sister went up to his shop and got a whole bunch of clothes for me from him. Okay. I hadn't met him or anything, but she said, Hey, Nipsey looked out for you. Sweats, pants, shoes. I said, Okay, thank you. Okay, now before you went to prison, were you a Rolling Sixties gang member? Yes, sir. Okay, and that was the gang that operated in the area that you were from, correct? Yes, sir. And is it your testimony that after you got out of prison, you got some kind of care package or clothing package from Nipsey Hussle? That I had never met. And it was a donation, basically, to you? Basically. All right. And was this facilitated through, you said, your play sister? So you're nodding your head. Is that a yes? Yes, ma'am. So that's somebody you knew, correct? Yes. So I just want to remind you, sir, you've been interrupting Mr. McKinney before he's been able to finish his question. If you guys were having a normal conversation, that's exactly what people do. But I need you to wait just a minute and let him finish the question and then answer it because it makes it a little harder for the court reporter when, if he interrupts you or if you interrupt him, okay? And I'm not trying to make you feel uncomfortable. I just want to make sure that your answers are accurately recorded in our transcript. And that's more difficult if the court reporter doesn't get the full question, okay? Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. Go ahead. Okay, so Mr. Lathan, your testimony is, first of all, let me ask you this. When you got out and got the care package from Nipsey, did you, were you made aware that Nipsey's from the neighborhood that you grew up in? Yes. Okay, and he gave you this wonderful gift that you were happy to receive, is that correct? Yes, sir. Can you tell us, you got out in September, can you tell us approximately when you got that gift from him? About two weeks. Two weeks after you got out? Yes, sir. And at some point after receiving that gift from him, did you have an opportunity to meet him and thank him? About the third week. So that would have been sometime in October or November? Is that a yes? Yes, sir. Okay, where did you meet him? In front of his store. Did you go to the store that day specifically to meet him and thank him, or did he happen to be there when you went there for some other business? Which day? The first time, after you received the gift. I went in to say thank you, and they said he's right there in the car. Okay, and is that when you met him for the first time? Yeah, about a month after I got out of jail. Did you take a photograph with him at that time? I did. And now I want to ask you some questions about March 31st, 2019, which was the day you got shot in the back. Is that correct? Yes, sir.
And now I want to ask you some questions about March 31st, 2019, which was the day you got shot in the back. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Had you met Nipsey at any time between the first time you met him and March 31st, 2019? One time. Okay, approximately when was that? Oh, about two or three weeks after I met him out in front of a shop. Okay, so again, we're talking probably at the end of 2018, early 2019? Something right in there. And during that second meeting or second time you met him, was it also at 3420 Slauson Avenue in front of his shop or was it some other place? No, it was right there. At the shop? Yes? Yes, sir. Okay, now on March 31st, 2019, did you go to his shop? March 31st? Yes. Yes. The day you got shot? Yes. Did you go there alone or with someone? with my nephew. How did the two of you get there that day? In his truck. Why did you go there that day? Well, he was complaining that I'm not in prison anymore so you don't have to wear the same shirt. I said, okay. He said, look, Nipsey's shop is over there. There you go, right there. So we got out to go into the shop and he said, he's right there. So my attention directed from going in to talk to him right there. Okay. So, is it your testimony that when you went to the area of Slauson and Crenshaw that day, it was your intention to go to the marathon store, which was Nipsey's shop, to buy a shirt? A t-shirt, just a t-shirt. Is it your testimony that once you got there, you saw Nipsey in the parking lot and decided to go talk to him? Yes. Did you ever go into the store that day? No. Do you recall approximately what time you arrived at the store? No, about around one around one something like that it was in the afternoon right yeah is that a yes yes thank you sir so you got to the store got out of the vehicle you arrived in correct yes and what happened next a lot well let's take it step by step you said that you saw nipsey correct yes sir did you go over and start talking to him I did. Did you stay in close proximity or that means in close range? Yes. The entire time you were there? Yes, sir. And you were talking to him personally one-on-one? -on -one? Yes. Can you tell us anything about what kind of mood he appeared to be in or what his demeanor was like during those conversations? Regular, just him. He's a warm, charismatic young man. And then at some point while you were out there, you got shot, correct? Indeed. Can you tell us approximately how long you were there before you got shot? Probably two minutes. And in the, you said two minutes that you were there. Can you just generally describe what was going on in the area where you were standing? We was talking about a chicken fajita that they sell over at the, what is it? El Pollo Loco or something had chicken and avocados in it. I'd never seen one. I've been gone 25 years. I said, man, what's that? He said, over at El Pollo Locos. I said, okay, after we leave here, I'm going to go get me one of them. And then we were going to go see a guy whose father had just died. Okay, did you see Nipsey interacting with any other people, talking to fans, taking photographs, anything like that? Yeah, little baby. His mother asked for a selfie with her son. He was going to turn three the next day and two other women. Okay, anything unusual happened while you were out there with him? No, sir. You said you arrived with someone, correct? Yes. Who is that person? My nephew. What's his name? Shermie. Okay, and was Shermie also right there in the same area with you, Nipsey, and any other of the folks who were there talking to him? Yes, sir. All right, I want to ask you some more questions about the shooting itself, okay? I want you to think back to just a few seconds before the shooting happened. Can you tell us where you were and what you were doing? I believe I was standing directly in front of Nipsey. We were in between two cars that was parked. Nipsey had his back to one car and had his face to me and I had my back to that car and my face to Nipsey. All right, let me show you an exhibit. Madam Foreperson, if you can raise the monitor. So Mr. Lathan, I know it's a little further away from you because you're not right in the witness chair, but there we have the big screen and then we also have the monitor right there. And if you can look at both of them, if you can't see, let me know, and we have exhibit books, and I'll bring one to you, okay? 
Okay. All right. First, let me show you grand jury exhibit number two. This is a photograph of Nipsey. Is that correct? Yes, sir. On that day that you met him at the store, was he wearing something on his head? A white wave cap. Okay, and is a wave cap similar to what you have on your head right now? Yes, sir. Okay, let me show you grand jury exhibit number four. I'm sorry, just so anybody reading the record will understand what you have on your head, can you describe what it is for us, please? A rag to keep your hair in place. Okay, so it's close to your head and it, is it stretchy? Yes. Okay, and it's tied at the back? Yes, ma'am. Okay, like a, I don't want to say scarf, but it, it's like a scarf. It's like a scarf? All right, thank you, sir. And the one you're wearing is black, correct? True. Do you remember the color that Nipsey was wearing that day? It was white. Go ahead. Showing you grand jury exhibit number four, it's an aerial photograph. Do you recognize the area shown and marked as 3420 Slauson? Yes, sir. Is that the location where Nipsey's store is? Yes, sir. And is that the location you went to that day? Yes, sir. Let me show you grand jury exhibit number six. Do you recognize the man both in the pink shirt and in the inset photograph? Yes, sir. Who is that person? It's my nephew. Was he the person that drove you there that day? Yes, sir. Was he also shot? Yes. So you mentioned being between two cars, is that right? Yes. Give me one moment, I apologize. Let me show you grand jury exhibit number 27. And again, Mr. Lathan, if you can't clearly see, let me know. Do you recognize what is shown in this photograph? Yes. What does the photograph show? A lot of clothing. Does it show the two cars that you and Nipsey were in between at the time of the shooting? Yes, sir. So we're looking at a crime scene photograph. There are two white cars parked in stalls. One is in a, what appears to be a disabled parking stall on the right, and the other is has the Audi symbol on the trunk and is the one to the left of that. Were you in between those two cars at the time of the shooting? Yes, sir. Were you leaning up against one of the cars? Yes. Which one were you leaning against? The one further to the left. The Audi, the one to the left? Yes. And was your back then up against the passenger side of that car? More like the back end of it. The trunk area? Is that a yes? Yes, sir. And were you facing the other white car? I was. Where was Nipsey just a few seconds before the shooting started? Right there by the other white car. Was he directly across from you? Yeah, when the shooting started, he was. And the two of you, were the two of you face to face? Yes, sir. Do you recall where Shermie was just a few seconds before the shooting started? And you can point to something in the photograph to give us an idea. He was where the black car is, but a little further out. Okay, and in this photograph, there's a, it's actually his vehicle to the right of this photograph, correct? Yes. When you say further out, do you mean out left of the front of that vehicle? Like going towards the street almost. Okay, but do you see the area where he was standing in this photograph anywhere? No. Okay, you're saying he was standing somewhere not shown in the photograph? Well, from what it looks like to me, it wasn't because I was under that car after I got shot. Okay, I'm talking about a few seconds before the shooting started. Do you remember where he was standing? Oh, no, he was away from us. Did you see him? I knew he was there because I had just spoke to him. Okay, did you see him when the shooting started or just before? No, I just ran. When you see gunfire at 1 o'clock, you too close to the gun, so I ran. Okay, so going back to a few seconds before the shooting started, were you so close to Nipsey that you could stretch out your arm and touch him? Pretty much. Okay, was there anyone else within a few feet of you that you recall seeing at the time the shooting started? Another young man. I don't know their name because, as I stated, I did 25 years. Everything is, is new. It's different. Okay, so... Are you saying, I don't know him personally, but I think there was another man standing next to me. Okay, was he to your left or to your right? He was to my left. Okay, so you described leaning with your back against that white Audi, correct? So does that mean, if you look at the exhibit, does that mean he was to your left 
meaning he was closer to the front of that car, or was he to your right, meaning he was closer to the back of the car? He was closer to the back of the car. So that would be to your right, correct? Okay, yeah. Is that a yes? Yes, ma'am. So you've established where you saw people just a few seconds before the shooting, correct? Yeah. Is that a yes? Yes. Now, starting a couple seconds before the shooting, tell us what happened from that point forward. So you're leaning with your back against the car, you're facing Nipsey, and then what happened? A guy just came around shooting. Okay, did you see a guy walk up? No, it happened that fast. Okay, what was either the first thing that you heard or the first thing that you saw? The first thing I saw was gunfire. All right, how did you see that? I looked up and he shot and that was it. Did, did you see a gun? I did. Okay, did you see muzzle flash or flame or the flash, the flash in the daytime that was too... Okay, so I ran. Did you see that on your left side or on your right side? On this side where I got shot. Okay, would that be closer to the front of that white car? Yeah. Okay, so is that a yes? Yes. And when you said on this side, you had your right hand and you had it to my left. Close to your left side of your arm? Yeah, it was on my left. Okay. So at some point, is it true at some point you turned to your left and you saw a gun and then muzzle flash? That's correct. Did you ever see the face of the person holding the gun? No, sir. Can you tell us what the gun looked like? A revolver. Okay, can you tell us anything about can you tell us anything about the color of the gun? I think silver. Okay, now what makes a revolver distinguished? You can see the bullet out of the gun. You can see the bullet inside the little the little chambers. It looks like little beehives. When they turn it, then the bullet goes like that. Like what? So it turns? Yeah. The cylinder turns? Yeah. And you can see inside? Yeah. Yes? Yes, ma'am. Let me show you grand jury exhibit number 17. It's a diagram that shows two different types of handguns. Do you see that? Yes, sir. Is one of those handguns a revolver? Yes, sir. Which one? The one at the bottom. Okay, what is it about that gun that makes you say it's a revolver? The barrel turns. When you say the barrel, are you referring to the round? Yes. Part of the gun? Yes, sir. Right above the trigger? Yes, sir. Okay, it's kind of like the old cowboy guns or guns we see in cowboy movies, correct? Yes, sir. Okay, so you know it was a silver-colored revolver, correct? Is that a yes? Yes, sir. Now, you saw the muzzle flash of what you believe is the first shot. Is that true? Yes, sir. Did you hear the person who fired that gun say something right before the gun was fired? I believe he said, you're through. You're through? Yeah. Is that what made you turn and look to your left? Yeah, when he walked up. Was that a yes? Yes, excuse me. Okay, and that first shot then, do you believe that first shot struck you? I believe so, but it was too much going on, you know. When I turned to run, it knocked my legs from up under me. Okay, let me stop you there. When you turned and saw the muzzle flash, was your back still up against the car? I believe so. Okay, so the part of your body that got struck wasn't exposed to the barrel of the gun for that first shot, correct? Right. After you saw the muzzle flash, did you also hear a loud noise? Pow. Okay, after you heard and saw the gunfire for the first time, what did you do? I fell down. On the first shot? I tried to run, but it knocked my legs from under me. Okay, what I'm trying to establish is if your testimony is were you leaning against the car with your back to the car when you turned to your left and saw the first shot? Yes. The part of your body that got struck was still up against the side of the car, correct? 
Well, when I seen the gun, I went to run and I saw the flash, but it was too late and I was knocked under the car. How many shots did you hear fired that day? It seemed like eight. Okay, and it's a difficult question. If you can answer it, it's fine. If you can't, that's fine too. But do you know which one of the shots, first shot, second shot, or third shot that you believe struck you? I thought it was the first shot. The first shot, okay. So I could be wrong because I've never been in that situation and everything happened so fast. So if I'm mistaken, I apologize. No, that's fair enough. But everything was a blur, you know. I got out and this happened and I was moving my feet to see if my legs still worked, you know, because when you get shot in the back, in the lower part, they told me at the hospital that, well, I'm sorry, don't tell us what they told you at the hospital. That's okay. Okay. Let me stop you there and ask you another question. When you turned and saw the gun, did it appear that the gun was being pointed at you? No. Could you tell whether the gun was being pointed at a particular target? Nipsey. Okay, so when you turned and saw that first muzzle flash, it looked to you like the gun was pointed at Nipsey, is that correct? Yes. After you heard the first shot or saw the muzzle flash, you turned to run, is that correct? Yes, sir. What happened? Were you able to run away? No, I took about a step and then fell under that car. You were able to take that one step before you fell, is that correct? Yes, sir. What is it that caused you to fall? The bullet in my back. Okay, you felt it strike your back, correct? It was hot. Hot? Hot like fire. Okay, what part of your body did it enter? My pelvis. My pelvis, it chipped a piece off. You look like you're pointing to your left side, is that right? Yes, yes. And do you have a bullet hole in your body as you sit here today? Yes, I do. And just as specifically as you can tell us where on your body it entered, I know you said your pelvis, but what does that mean specifically? You know, the round part of your pelvis like that? Yes, and you made a semicircular motion with both fingers. Yeah, I think it chipped the top of it because they say it chipped a piece of the bone. Let me stop you there. I just want to know where it entered your body. Oh, so when you look in the mirror and you see the hole, yeah, right there, right here in my back. Is it above your belt line or below? It's below. Below your belt line? Yeah. And is it in the soft part of your buttocks or it's right above it? Like right below the belt line? Yeah. And is that a yes? Yes, excuse me. That's okay. From your tailbone where your spine comes down the middle of your back to your side, would you say that's right in the middle of that space or more to the side or more to the middle? More to the side. Okay, so may I stand? Madam Foreperson, with your permission? Yes. Okay, so I apologize for using your table. You're leaning up against that white car, sort of like I'm leaning up against this table, correct? Facing Nipsey, is that true? Yes. You heard a voice say, you're through, and then you turned to your left and immediately saw a gun and muzzle flash, is that correct? Yes. So then you turned to your right, and I got it right there. And you got it as you turned one step to the right? Right. You got hit? Right there. Right where I'm putting my hand right below? Right there. Right below my belt, just left of your midline? Yes. And then you drop to the ground? Is that correct? Yes, sir. Did the shooting continue after you fell? Yes, it did. Was it one continuous pattern of shots or was it a pattern to the shots like staccato pattern? It was like one, two, three, then it stopped, then it came back, one, two, three more, and then it stopped, then it came back again, and I was like, I'm sure this guy's gonna finish me off because I can't move, but he didn't. When, let me go back and show you the grand jury exhibit number four. After you fell to the ground, what if anything could you see? Nothing, I fell on my stomach. So you, 
So I could just see out of the periphery. I couldn't see anybody's face. Like I said, I didn't see nothing. I didn't know nothing. But if I must, you know, was your head, were your feet closer to the, how can I say this? Were your feet facing or closer to where the shooter came from and your head closer to the back of the vehicle that you were laying on? My Half of my body was under the vehicle because I only took one step and then it knocked me to the ground. Okay, but you turned away from the tax. Look at the exhibit. You see the building that says tax insurance? Yes. So you turned to run away from that because you were running away from the shooter, correct? Yes. So when you went down, were your feet closer to where the shooter came from and your head away? Yeah. Okay. Is that a yes? Yes. Now, when you were down, was your head facing eastbound, meaning you had a view over this direction, over this direction where I'm holding the pointer? Yeah. East of where you fell, or did you have a view of your direction or west of your direction toward the fish restaurant and the T-Mobile store? This way? Yeah. All right. So you fell down, head toward the back of the vehicle that you were leaning against? Yes. And you were looking toward the Shell gas station over here? Yeah. And after you fell, could you either hear the shooter? Did you hear the shooter say anything after those first words, you're through? No. Did you see what, if anything, happened to Nipsey after the shooting started? Now, when you were down, was your head facing eastbound, meaning you had a view over this direction, over this direction where I'm holding the pointer? Yeah. East of where you fell, or did you have a view of your direction or west of your direction toward the fish restaurant and the T-Mobile store? This way? Yeah. All right, so you fell down, head toward the back of the vehicle that you were leaning against? Yes. And you were looking toward the Shell gas station over here? Yeah. And after you fell, could you either hear the shooter? Did you hear the shooter say anything after those first words, you're through? No. Did you see what, if anything, happened to Nipsey after the shooting started? He came back and shot several more times and I heard women screaming loudly. Let me stop you there. Did you see Nipsey go down to the ground? He went down after me. Did you see that? Yes. Okay, so after you went down, you saw him go down? Right behind me. Now, after you went down, did you have a view of him? A slight view. What does that mean? Like I could only see half of his body past the car tire. Okay, but your head, your line of view was mainly facing away from him, correct? Right, and I turned like this. I'm still on the ground, and so my face just turned like that. Okay, so you're indicating that you turned your face back toward the direction where Nipsey was, which would have been to your left? It would be to my right because if I laid down like right now on the on the ground with my face like this I could only look that way and that's where he was at behind me okay was he down on the ground closer to the car that he was up against or closer to when the shooting started I believe so yeah okay did you hear him say anything during the shooting either when the shooting was happening or in those breaks in between shots no he called out a name I don't know what it was why do you think it was a name as opposed to on something else? Because somebody was hollering, hey, who did this? Who did this to you? I mean, while the shooting was still going on. No. Did you hear him say anything like, stop? No. Or why are you doing this to me? No. Just let the record reflect when you said that the witness was facing the Shell gas station, that that's in the direction of Crenshaw Boulevard, the alley and then Crenshaw Boulevard. Right. Thank you. Okay. Tell us what happened after the last shot you heard. What, if anything, did you see or hear next after the last shot? His brother came to his aid. Whose brother? Nipsey's brother. Okay. Do you know his name? Sam. Had you met Sam before? I have. Were you still on the ground when that happened? I was. And were there a number of people gathered around Nipsey trying to help him? Yes, Sam was giving him mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. 
Were you conscious and aware of what was happening the whole time or did you ever lose consciousness? If you, I could say I blacked out for a moment, but I had to stay woke because I seen people black out and don't come back. And I was like, I can't let this happen to me, but this is still happening to me. Were you hospitalized immediately after your injury? Yes. Were you taken to the hospital by paramedics? Yes, excuse me, the lady said. Well, don't tell us what the lady said. The hospital lady. I know you can't tell us what the hospital lady said. Okay. But you did go to a hospital, correct? Yes. You saw a doctor? Yes, I did. Okay, and I noticed that you're here today in a wheelchair. Have you been using a wheelchair? Yes, I have. Are you able to walk? about five or six feet and then what happens after five or six feet my left side goes almost completely numb like your foot goes to sleep it comes all the way up to my hand and I could feel it and you're holding your left arm right wrist area all the way down to my feet I'm like this is not it's not right so but it cut the bullet cut some nerves let me stop you there so basically you're saying that the injury you suffered has affected your ability to walk more than five or six feet at least for now correct yeah and it's been over a month since you've been shot yeah is that a yes yes i have to learn how to walk all over again they said it's a process but if you force yourself to walk a little places then you'll be able to walk more and more okay I guess it's therapy they call it so physical therapy right I don't have it but I'm using my walker because when I got out of prison they gave me a walker because I had my stroke my right side was messed up so I used a walker for a while and then when I was able to get off of it then I started going on passes you know how many days were you in the hospital about four are you scheduled for any follow-up visits well, several people have made business arrangements, but this today took over. The lady was going to do the physical therapy for me, my wife, my ex-wife. So let me stop you there. Is the answer yes, you expect that you will still be going to get medical treatment for what happened? Oh, indeed. All right. All right. Let me stop you there because I want to show you a video. A who? A video. A video. Okay. A video. I'm going to start the video at 1401.45 and it's exhibit, this is exhibit 11, cam 6. I'm going to turn down the lights so it's a bit easier and it's a bit dimmer. Okay, I'm going to start it at 1401.27. Can you see the video, Mr. Lathan? Yeah. Is that a yes? Yes, ma'am. And I want you to focus on this area at the top right of the video. Do you see that black SUV coming into view? I do. Is that the vehicle you arrived in with your nephew, Shermie? His vehicle is, is further back. This vehicle that I'm pointing to that's backing up? Yeah. Is that the vehicle you arrived in? I believe so. Okay, and over here to the left of the vehicle on the video, it, this person appears to have a white rag on his head. Is that Nipsey? I believe so. And the door of the vehicle is opening now. 1402.13. And tell me if that's you getting out of the passenger side of the vehicle. Yep. That's you? Yes, sir. Okay. Now you testified that essentially up until the time of the shooting, you were in this area, the area that you're standing in, now close to those two white cars around the front of the marathon store talking to Nipsey and some of the other guys who were around. Is that correct? Yes, sir. I just want to fast forward to 141050. And I'll make it 14, 10, 15. And I want you to focus now on this area up here. Is that your back up against the white car as you described? Yeah, I can't really see it. Right here? Okay. Does that appear to be where you were leaning? Yeah. Yes? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. And does this appear to be Nipsey over here taking a picture with someone? That little child. Okay, and this person here in the pink shirt, is that your nephew, Shermie? I believe so. Standing toward the front of his vehicle? Yeah. So there's Nipsey, you, the young man who you didn't know to your right, and your nephew, Shermie, here, correct? Yes, sir. Okay, focus on this person walking toward the cars. Okay, did you have an opportunity to see that? Yes, sir. 
Okay, didn't that accurately show what happened when the shooting started and what happened to you? Yeah, I was the one that fell. All right, I want to show you first. I want to show you another version of that that zoomed in a little bit, okay? Okay. This one is zoomed in so we can't see the calendar that's embedded in the video, but on this clip, at four minutes and 12 seconds into this clip, and this is, for the record, grand jury exhibit number 13. This video better shows you getting out of the black car, correct? Yes, sir. And you're shaking hands with Nipsey here and you're just talking, correct? Yes, sir. Now I want to go forward a little bit in this zoomed in view. Okay, I'm gonna go to 10 minutes and 18 seconds into the view. Nipsey is, this is you with your back leaning up against the white Audi, correct? Yes, sir. Nipsey is right in front of you, is that right? Yes, sir. This is your nephew, Shermie, almost directly between the two cars, maybe five or six feet away from you, is that correct? Yes, sir. And then this is the other gentleman that you described who you didn't know his name, is that right? That's right. Right, let's watch it from this point forward. Actually, I didn't go far enough, so in the interest of time, I'm gonna go further a little bit. All right, I'm gonna start at 12.15. Nipsey comes over to take a picture on the sidewalk in front of the tax business, correct? Yes. This is him here. All right, let's watch it from here. All right, 1325 into this clip, Nipsey is here with the white rag. Your back is leaning up against the white car, the guy that you described next to you, and your nephew in the pink shirt about five or six feet away from you in between the two white cars, correct? Yes, sir. All right, now focus on this person here that's going to come and walk between the two cars coming from the left to right. Now, at 14... I'm going to stop it at 1420. Did that video accurately show the shooting that happened that day? I had never seen it before, but yeah. You had never seen this video before, correct? Yes, sir. But in the terms of what you saw on the video, did that accurately reflect what you saw and saw that day? Yes, sir. Okay, last couple of questions for you. You made a number of statements about why you were at the store that day, correct? Yes, sir. And one of the things that you had previously told me and other people in other statements was that when you first arrived at the store, you went inside the store to attempt to purchase a shirt, was told that they didn't have your size, and then you walked out and had a conversation with Nipsey. Is that correct? Yes. Was that part of the story true? That did you ever go into, listen to the question, did you ever go into the store that day? No. And one of the things that you had previously told me and other people in other statements was that when you first arrived at the store, you went inside the store to attempt to purchase a shirt, was told that they didn't have your size, and then you walked out and had a conversation with Nipsey. Is that correct? Yes. Was that part of the story true? That did you ever go into, listen to the question, did you ever go into the store that day? No. Okay. Pardon me? This is being provided as potentially exculpatory evidence pursuant to People v. Johnson. Please consider this evidence as you would any other evidence that is presented to you during the course of this hearing and your deliberations. Okay, so I know you previously testified that when you went to the store, it was your intent to go in and buy a shirt, correct? Right. Is that a yes? That's correct. But the fact is you never went into the store to attempt to make a purchase, correct? No, they said he's outside. I said, okay. Okay, when you made those statements to me and to others in the past that you actually went into the store, did you make that statement because you were afraid that if you admitted that you just went and only spoke to Nipsey that it would somehow affect your parole status? I did. All right, thank you. In addition to the, the conviction for murder that you previously testified about, you also prior to that had about four felony convictions for drug sales. Is that correct? I did. And that's just the way you were living your life at that time in your life. Is that correct? Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. No further questions. Any questions for this witness from any grand jurors? Please raise your hand so the sergeant at arms can collect them. While we're waiting for that question, may I ask another question? Yes. Where's Shermie? Probably at work. Okay. You guys currently live together? Yes, sir. And he's, do you know whether he's aware that we were trying to get him to come into court and give testimony? 
Well, he says, you don't have to tell me what he says, but have efforts been made at your residence? Yes. To try to, yes. Locate him? Yes. Okay, all right, thank you. This is a grand juror question, but you previously answered this question when you were asked by Mr. McKinney. You did not see the shooter's face, correct? No, I didn't. Okay, any additional questions? Okay, this is a grand juror question and it refers to your parole and maybe why you. Your answer regarding what you did as soon as you arrived there was a little different. So you were imprisoned for a murder and you were released out on parole, correct? Yes, ma'am. And there are conditions of parole when you're released out on parole, correct? Yes, ma'am. And sometimes part of that condition of parole is that you do not congregate or associate with known gang members. Is that correct? Correct. Was that the condition that you were concerned about or was there another condition? That was a condition because they said he's not like that at all, all over the community before this happened. I said, okay. But you were concerned that your parole officer, who is the person who supervises you, right, when you're released from prison and you're on parole, would violate your parole. And if you violate, your parole is violated, what happens? You go back to prison. Because parole is allowing you out with conditions, and if you violate them, then you go back to serve the full term. Is that correct? I served the full term. Well, but you served your full term and you were released, but there's still additional time if you violate your parole that you would have to serve in prison, correct? Yes. Okay, and you didn't want to go back, correct? No, ma'am. All right, any additional questions? Okay, Madam Foreperson, if you would please admonish the witness. Okay, it's the long version. Yes, before you leave, please listen carefully to what I'm going to say to you now. You are admonished not to reveal to any person except as directed by the court what questions were asked or what responses were given or any other matters concerning the nature or subject of the grand jury's investigation which you learned during your appearance before the grand jury unless and until such time as the transcript of this grand jury proceeding is made public. I wish to advise you that a violation of this order can be the basis of a contempt of court charge against you. Do you understand this admonition? Yes, ma'am. Now, Mr. Lathan, you have a lawyer. You may discuss with your lawyer any part of this testimony, the questions, the answers, and that's about it, but anything that you would like to. You are not restricted from any communications with your lawyer. Do you understand? Okay. If it's not your lawyer, you can't discuss anything. This is a secret proceeding, and you have been advised that if you violate that, then you could be held in contempt, okay? Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much for coming. You're now, we're going to recess right after this, and you're excused. And I'm going to ask Mr. McKinney if he will wheel you out, and then he can come back and get all his things, all right? And if the sergeant at arms could open the door for you. Thank you, Mr. Lathan. Thank you. Hope you feel better. It's a lot. Thank you.